was the last time you had a perfect week of sleep? In a recent survey, 78% of respondents couldn't recollect the last time they had, while 55% couldn't remember the last time they had even a perfect night. Oh boy. Well, with sleep affecting functions like metabolism, brain health, and health conditions like heart disease or obesity and depression, why do so many of us still neglect this vital component of our well-being? Dr. John Heiss, the Vice President of Product Innovation at Herbalife, is a scientist, ultra marathoner, and adventurer as well. He says lifestyle choices could be the culprit, but getting real rest is possible. Welcome, Dr. Heiss. So nice to have you on iHollywood TV. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, so first off, Dr. Heiss, let's just go ahead and start with this survey. Do Americans even know what a good night's sleep is or how to even get it anymore? Because I think so many people are always so busy and we get very little sleep. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, myself included, right? We we know what great night of sleep feels like. Um, but I think the most alarming yeah. thing from the study is that most people don't know how to reliably go about getting that great night of sleep. You know, it's so tough to break the habits that we have at bedtime, but where should we start to ensure a good night's rest, Dr. Heiss? Yeah, so look, we're all stressed, we're overworked, we get that brain chatter that's, you know, preventing us from falling asleep. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's things like alcohol at night, it's late night snacks, it's browsing our phone before bed, and all those things are disrupting our sleep way more than what we realize. Um, science is showing that it's not just if you can fall asleep, but it's a quality of that sleep that matters most. There's some re really simple changes people can make. Um, if you're going to have wine, maybe have it while you're making dinner, not after dinner. Um, moving that dessert maybe closer to after dinner instead of late night. Um, or you can have things like an herbal tea. Um, one of the easiest things is dimming the lights around the house. That can actually help you fall asleep a little bit faster. Dr. High, so many Americans, they will eat late and they will snack as well throughout the evening. What time should we cut that off? What time should we say we're not going to eat past this certain amount of time, you know, eating dinner or any sort of snacks or drinks? Yeah, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. I know people work late, so they're eating late. Um, but some of those right. carbohydrates, while you might fall asleep a little quicker, they're actually disrupting some of the deep sleep that's happening in your brain. Um, and deep mm -hmm. sleep is actually what's thought to contribute to Alzheimer's, and it disrupts this brain cleansing process, removing beta amyloid, which leads to dementia. So I would recommend two to three mm -hmm. hours. If you can try to limit food, any food intake in that window, that's going to help you get much better quality sleep for your brain health. And obviously nobody wants to get dementia or Alzheimer's. You know, that's what my grandmother passed away from. So we want to avoid that at all costs. Now, you're also quite an athlete and adventurer, Dr. Heiss. You do things like 500-mile bike relays through Death Valley. Um, Talk to us a little bit about the long-reaching effects of poor sleep on not only our bodies, but also our moods, because it really just affects everything, right? Yeah, I mean, the... Sleep's important for athletic performance, obviously, but it also has profound health impacts. Um, you know, we touched on Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. started here by your grandmother, um, but you know, things like Thank obesity, you. right? There's a great study that shows that sleep deprived people actually gravitate towards mm -hmm. sugary and fatty foods. So maybe just by cleaning up your sleep hygiene might actually help you shed those last few pounds. Um, also a 30% increase in risk of cardiovascular disease. So there's lots of benefits mm -hmm. Um, to prioritize sleep beyond just maybe feeling energized for the day. Now, Dr. Heiss, do you think as far as all of us eating a bunch of sweets, can that contribute to dementia, diabetes, all the health risk? Yeah, I mean, all the above, you know, everything in moderation, um, the sugar spike, it's mm -hmm. going to, like I said, disrupt deep sleep, impact REM sleep, um, and, you know, eventually to diabetes and kind of all that funnels into the vascular network in the brain. Um, so it definitely has an mm -hmm. impact. You know, the survey also ranked who's getting the best and worst night's sleep in the nation. Where did our state land? Well, so kind of the states, of course, uh, all over the place. California is ranked number one, um, which is which is great. However, it's still mm -hmm. about an hour below the recommended average, around eight hours. And remember, it's not just right. the quantity of sleep, it's the quality of sleep that matters the most. Well, Dr. Heiss, what an important conversation. Tell us where should the viewers and listeners go to learn more about these survey findings and so much more. Yeah, so we've got survey findings and general wellness tips at our website, herbalife.com. 
Well, Dr. Heiss, you take care. You have a great day, and I hope you get a great night's rest this evening. <laughs> Thanks, you too.